Coming across a race with this dominant of a runner is what we can continually find when we see the power of the second call. When first looking at running styles, we see that the four Paddington wants to go gate to wire to win. On top of that, he's the only horse that wants to win in that style. This should tip us off to one thing, a potential lone speed play. And that's what you'll see we end up having. But how can we accurately identify that? It starts with looking at the winning second call times for every runner in the race. If you look up top, I've plugged in Paddington's last race for reference. Going through the rest of this field, you'll see that the 111 and 1 5 seconds is going to be very dominant in this race. Two back for the one hang time was against a lesser class of runners, and we see that he was able to run down a 1 minute 13 and 1 5 seconds second call, a full two seconds slower of what we project in this race. Going back nine races, and again against $25,000 claimers, we see 1 minute 16 and 2 5 seconds to the second call. Very slow, and he'll be overwhelmed by the speed at this point of the race. An easy toss for win contention. The two, Deputy Connect, took a lot of money and is a horse that you could use to help beat the takeout when you look at his winning effort two races back. Second call was 1 minute 13 and 3 fifths seconds, another horse that has only won against a second call over two seconds slower. You might look at his race last time out in the slop and see honest fractions, but you have to analyze that. Where was he ever a threat to win the race? The whole time we can see that he was chasing speed, and that's what we should expect to see in this spot again with a dominant early runner. Horses like this is what should make you as a handicapper want to dive into betting these races. Short price and a horse that's going to be compromised by the pace scenario. In spite of trainer is in the same group as the other two runners. Look at the second call of the win. 1 minute and 13 seconds. 2 seconds slower than when our early runner can set. His race at the very bottom, 10 back, can give us a clue into how he may perform today. We see the second call of 1 minute, 11 and 2 fifth seconds. He did challenge for the lead, but after that he faded. That should add to the confidence to you as a handicapper that he can't run a winning race against that fast of fractions. Lick even last race, same thing, set early fractions, then faded. Sort of the race that we saw the two horse run, fading against that 111 second call. And then lastly we have the 7 what's up doc, and he's going to be our main threat to our early runner Paddington. We can see that in his win he saw a 1 minute 11 and 1 fifth seconds second call at Churchill Downs. There's a good amount of things we need to look into. What I want you to look at is what position he was in at the first call of that race, and it was fourth. Now look at the race after that win. He was challenging for the lead at the first call and second call before being beat down the lane. The takeaway is that he wants to come from off the pace and sit mid-pack. When he's forward, he can't hold enough energy late to win. Think about the first call positioning these other runners want to run winning races. The one is practically a closer. The two wants to be just off the leader, three wants to lay back and press late, and obviously the four will shoot out to the front. We see that the four is going to be out in front, and the one and three will likely be in the back of the pack. The point I'm getting at is that you have to realize we shouldn't see a first call from Paddington of 47 and 1 fifth seconds. He's clearly the lone speed in here, and should be able to really bleed those early fractions. This is going to allow the 7 to be much more forward than what he wants to be. Take that same thought process to the second call times. Paddington should get a clear lead in here and control the front. Even if he runs there in 1 minute and 12 seconds, the rest of the field is going to struggle against that fast of a call. We know the 7 should be able to beat that, but if he's right up on the 4, he fades from using all that energy early to stick forward. Betting wise, this is a short field you can take advantage of, first off just in straight wagers. The 2 is 3 to 2, along with the 4, and then the 7 is 3 to 1. We've confidently tossed the 2, and I mentioned beating takeout, and this is the horse that does that for you. 40% of the money is backing this runner, and we're saying he has no shot. Also, think about how many are going to include him in multi-race wagers. That's a massive advantage to us as a better. Now, on the flip side, we're agreeing that the 4 at 3 to 2 is the play. And if you know me, you know I'm one that believes in two-horse betting, even if you still think the 7 is a threat in here, you could put 60% of your total wager on the 4 and then 40% of your wager on the 7. We'd be looking at a 50% return on our investment, which is the minimum you should be looking for when betting two horses in a race. Looking at the replay, we can see just how easy the lead was for Paddington as expected. 48 and 3 fifths seconds to the first call, and we see the 2 and 7 off the pace as expected. Second call goes in 1 minute, 12 and 3 fifths seconds, and you see the two trying to make a run, but Paddington has all that extra energy 
that we expect to see in a lone speedrunner. The reason why finding plays like this is so important is because they offer even better betting opportunities in the horizontal wagers on the day. Yes, we're taking an obvious horse, but we're really able to press our opinion in other legs where the favorites may be vulnerable.